In this video, I will show you what is inside RGB table lamp. In particular, what is this interesting component I found inside? How does it PCB work and how LEDs are controlled? Of course, with an examples and schematic diagram. But before we start, don't forget to press subscribe button in order to see more educational and entertaining videos like that. First of all, let's see what this lamp can do. It changes regimes in a very interesting way, when it gets heat or squeezed. Apparently, it has RGB LEDs inside, which are controlled by some algorithm, because colors are changing. It gets power from three batteries connected in series, which gives 4.5 volts in total. Additionally, it can be turned on and off with the button at the bottom. So the questions I would like to answer by disassembling this device is how the heat or squeeze is detected, which type of sensor is used inside, some intelligent accelerometer or something else. I bet you will be surprised with the answer. Additionally, I'm a little bit interested in how the circuit is functioning overall and how RGBs are controlled. So in best traditions of this channel, let's disassemble it to find out how it works. After cracking cat's ball, we can see the PCB. It has a bunch of components on it. To look at the other side of the board, let's disconnect it from plastic case. As you can see, it is one-sided PCB, which has copper traces only at one side. This is done to decrease price of the device, because obviously one-sided boards are cheaper. That is by the way for what engineers are getting paid. They do stuff that works and they try to do it as cheap as possible. And if it is possible in the project to make fewer layers PCB, then usually it is done. And who if not Chinese engineers know how to make something as cheap as possible, right? As in any one-sided design, all SMD components are soldered to one side of the board, whereas at the other side there is button and a metal cylinder, which should be our heat sensor, responsible for detecting heats. We will have a look at it just in a moment. Before that, I would like to look at one of the most important components of this kit, light emission diodes. There are two pairs of LEDs, RGB ones, with the help of which any color can be created, and white LEDs, which are just white. In order to check any LED, it is possible to use a simple multimeter in a diode check mode. So when a plus probe is applied to a node and minus to cathode of a diode, it starts glowing. As you can see, red, green and blue colors are controlled independently, which allows different color mixing ability. Also, diodes are connected in pairs, in parallel. We can see that caused by checking one, another also glows. That means they are in parallel. The same can be done with white LEDs, plus to a node and minus to cathode and it also glows as you can see. So, in order to control those diets, there are a bunch of components, and it will be easier to figure out how everything works together with a schematic, which looks like this. As you can see, nothing really complicated happens in here. There are three batteries connected in series to power the circuit, two ceramic capacitors close to the power pin of the controller to filter input voltage, here is on-off button, heat sensor with pull-up resistor. All the control, including these two switches states monitoring, is done by the microcontroller. So, MCU as well controls LED brightness, individually of each color. To do so, there are four transistors that are controlled by the PWM signals from the microcontroller. As you may know, transistors are needed in order to not overload MCU outputs, cause only small amount of current supplied from MCU can control much higher currents that flow through LEDs. As you can see, it is very basic circuit, which most of you should clearly understand and maybe even use if needed in the future. But still, before going further, I want to say some words about this circuit operation, because some aspects might not be clear. Let's start with on and off button. As you can see, it is connected to the MCU input, and it works like a push button. When it is pressed, the GPIO is pulled to the ground. Controller detects it and starts operating, sending PWM signals to the transistors. Why I'm telling you such a simple thing like that? Because, as you can see, batteries power MCU all time. There is no switch to break the circuit. However, in such case, MCU should discharge batteries all the time. Even if lamp is not working, right? However, it is not like it looks from the first view. Because in the MCU there is usually solution that allows reduced consumption in such systems. In reality, when the button is pressed to turn the device off, MCU falls asleep and its consumption decreases dramatically. It performs very limited functionality with much lower power consumption. Its consumption is so low that it can stay in such regime for months and even years. But at the same moment, it still provides some functions. For example, it can track this exact pin with a button. 
and when it detects the change of a state of a button, it wakes up and starts operating with a normal consumption already. Really nice solution, isn't it? If it comes to the heat sensor, the same principle is applied in here, but without falling asleep and waking up. Instead of waking up and falling asleep, it just changes the working regimes. Also, for some reason, it has external pull-up to VCC with this resistor, not internal, which usually all microcontrollers have. By using internal pull-up, for example, you can just get rid of one component from a board and make the device cheaper. I don't know why they didn't use internal one. Now it is time to see how this heat sensor works, which is really interesting. As you can see, its structure looks pretty simple, it has only two pins. One is connected to the case, while another sticks from the center. So let's open it and look inside. And as usually in all these cheap devices, simple mechanical principle stands behind it. There is a spring inside, which is positioned ideally at the center. And in normal conditions it doesn't touch the case. However, when something disturbs it, for example, when you hit the device, spring starts bouncing left and right, touching the metal case. And obviously at such moments, when there is a contact between two pins, current flows. Really simple and cheap solution, right? In the best Chinese traditions. Also, it kinda reminds me tilt sensor from one of the previous videos, where I was disassembling posture tracker. In that tilt sensor, other simple mechanical principle was used, to detect when the device is tilted more than some angle. Using similar cylindrical case with two pins and ball inside, which was rolling down and up, MCU was tracking when two pins are connected together by measuring voltage across it. As you can see, both solutions are a little bit similar and, in my opinion, are not ideal, but simple and cheap. Coming back to our cat, here is how the signal at MCU input looks like when sensor is triggered. As you can see, voltage at the pin drops from VCC to ground and then rises back to VCC. And having bouncing for such a small amount of time is enough to detect a hit and change the regime. By the way, after disassembling it, I soldered it back and it works just fine without case, even after pulling the spring several times really really hard in different directions. So as you can see, it is robust as well. Let's now have a look at another part of the circuit, which control LEDs. As I said, due to a limited amount of current that MCU pin can supply, diodes are powered through transistors and not directly from MCU pins. So MCU supplies only small current to the transistor base. Current is limited by this resistor, and here through the LEDs much higher current flows, which is already limited by another resistor. Now it is really interesting to look how MCU actually controls those LEDs. Look at PWM signals which it creates. Let's start with a white diodes. By the way, as you can see, I have a big hands and can hold PCB with a scope probe touching transistor base and film everything with the other hand. Good for me. So as you can see, there is no regulation of white diode. Transistor is just constantly turned on and current flows through it. Brightness is not regulated in such case. But situation with RGB diodes is very different. For example, now I am measuring signal at the base of transistor, which controls blue diode. As you can see, PWM signal duty cycle changes. It increases from 0 to 100%. That means that the brightness of each diode is regulated by changing the time they turned on and off, which as a result of subsequent color mixing allows to create thousands of different colors. As a result, correspondingly to the duty cycle changes, you can see how color of LEDs changes from one to another. Obviously, same principle is applied to all those diodes in one chip. And eventually, at the end of the cycle, when, for example, blue LED must be turned off, duty cycle decreases from 100% to zero, and after that, loop restarts. Also, as you may have guessed, there is no brightness or power regulation when batteries are discharging. That means that at nominal 4.5 volts, diodes are glowing brighter. And at lower voltages, due to a lower voltage applied to the LED branch, brightness is lower, which is not quite good in some applications. For this cat lamp, of course, it doesn't matter that much, but in some applications it might be needed. And having MCU on board, it can be easily fixed. There are some techniques that can help maintaining constant brightness even without DC-DC converter. For example, using analog to digital converter that usually every MCU has. Using such a converter, input voltage can be measured. And then, knowing the input voltage, duty cycle can be adjusted in order to have constant brightness at different voltage levels. Let's have a simple example. Let's say the voltage of the batteries is 4.5 volts and duty cycle is 100%, percent 
which corresponds to brightness of 100 lumens, let's say. Now MCU measures battery's voltage and gets 4.5 volts. In its lookup table in the memory, 4.5 volts corresponds to only 80% duty cycle, so it adjusts the maximum duty cycle limit to 80% correspondingly. Now with such a duty cycle, the maximum brightness that can be achieved at this voltage is only 80 lumens. Now what happens if voltage decreases to the minimal level, let it be 4 volts. Voltage decrease would obviously lead to a current decrease through the LEDs and as a result brightness decrease. But because MCU detects that battery's voltage decreased, it just increased duty cycle to 100%. Now with 4V and 100% peak duty cycle, it is possible to achieve the same brightness. Same brightness of 80 lumens, like with a 4.5V. Easy peasy! By the way, numbers that I used, they are just for an example. Real values obviously are different and depend on each specific case and must be calculated. So, as you can see, only one MCU can provide such great functionality. It's actually very good that we have integrated circuits nowadays. Caveman didn't have such an opportunity. And here I should use my favorite meme of the month. So that was a cat lamp. Subscribe and like this video. It is very important for me, because in such case I would see that these type of videos are interesting for you. Also, in case of any questions, write them in the comments. Bye!